Welcome to video 19 of series 3 and in this video I'll show you how to use an overlap sphere. Right, so before I can actually apply an explosion force to lots of rigid body game objects, I need to have some way to detect them. Right, so if I've got a whole bunch of cubes there all with rigid bodies and then I fire a grenade on them and well, I need to use an overlap sphere basically to collect uh, all the colliders that were in the blast radius and then apply an explosion force to all of them. Oh, by the way, if you notice uh, like the uh, floor flickering like that, uh, all it is is that uh, the floor has uh, shadows set to uh, off. So cast shadows off. So either you set the cubes to off or the floor uh, to off. So that's just a sidetrack there. Let me just turn that to on. All right, and if I just hit play, you can see now that it's not a problem. Okay, so I'm sorry, I just thought I should point that out. All right, so getting back to the script itself, uh, the grenade explosion script, uh, I need to first make a variable. I need to make an array of colliders, uh, an array of the type collider that will collect all of the colliders, will house all of the colliders touched by the overlap sphere. Uh, so I'll call this private uh, collider. And to make an array, as you saw before, two square brackets, I'll call it hit colliders. All right. And I'm also going to need a float, so a blast radius. I'm going to make this public. Float blast radius. Okay, and I'll set it in the inspector. I'll make a, a new function, my own. Uh, I'll call this explosion work, say, for example. And it will need a... Uh, a uh, parameter, I'll need uh, something passed in, and I'm going to make that the vector 3, so the point of the explosion. Uh, exactly where did that happen? So explosion point. Okay, now I'll call the function, uh, and I don't need the debug log uh, statement anymore, and I'll call the function now, explosion work, and I'll supply it with that vector 3, and that's what we have right up, up above. So col.contacts, uh, the first uh, bit in the, uh, well, the first index in that array, dot point, dot two string, all right. Okay, so that method uh, will get called now. And, oh, oops, what am I doing? Two string. No, of course not. That's silly. Now it's also type vector three. I can't pass in a type of string because this needs a vector three, right? So when I was saying dot two string, I'm passing in a string which is nonsensical. All right. Uh, now that I've done that, uh, now I want to collect the colliders. So I'm going to say hit colliders. Assign to it physics. And this one here dot overlap sphere. And it's really simple to use. It needs an origin, a point of origin. Where is this overlap sphere growing from? And uh, that is uh, none other than the uh, explosion point because I've supplied it here. So col.contacts, the first point, and that gets supplied in here. And now I can make use of it here. Explosion point uh, radius is blast radius. And I could if I were uh, interested in limiting which layers the overlap sphere can touch, I can also add another uh, parameter, which is the layer mask. I'm not going to do that, so that way this can affect any game object that has a rigid body on it. Instead, all I'll do is to just stop it there. But if you are, for example, going to like make an enemy AI and it's going to, the enemy AI is going to use an overlap sphere at intervals to look for the player, then you definitely, definitely use a layer mask. And then you only search for the player's uh, layer by doing that. It's much more efficient that way. Okay. And, uh, that's it. Uh, so now that I've got all those, um, colliders, uh, so perhaps I should be doing something with them. Uh, so what I'll say is that um, uh, for each uh, collider, and I'll just say it uh, hit col in hit colliders. Now I will in the next video add an explosion force to it, but in this video I'll just say debug dot log uh, hit collider. Oops, not that one. So hit col, 
uh, dot uh, game object dot name. All right. So that will get called, and there's a good reason, you know, up here I didn't mention that, but add stuff before you destroy the game object, run functions first, otherwise when you destroy the game object, uh, well, if anything you add afterwards is uh, not likely to run. Okay, uh, let's go back and let me give that a try. Let's see what happens. All right, there you go. It's detected the floor prototype. Oh, hold on, it's got a blast radius of zero, so it only will give me information of what it touches. Silly me. All right, so going back here to the grenade, uh, if you go to grenade explosion, it needs a blast radius. Uh, I'll just try 10 for now. Um, um, I'm not really too sure what to add. You only know once, once I start adding the explosion force and then blowing stuff up, then it'll make more sense. Uh, I, what I want to do, though, is I would like to add some cubes. Uh, just so that it gives me uh, something to, you know, see uh, for giving me information on. Let me just uh, reset the position here. Just move it out of the way a bit. And uh, actually, I might just reduce the size of those icons. They do get in the way sometimes. So you just notice what I was doing there. All right. Okay, come back and just move that up. All right. So what do I want to do? I want to add a rigid body. Oh, okay, I've already been searching for that. So I'll add that rigid body. And yes, I want it to use gravity. I might just make it a little heavier than one unit. All right. Um, yeah, okay. And in, in, in constraints, I want it to be able to move in any direction and rotate in any direction as well. So if I hit play, I'll see that it's a normal uh, rigid body game object. Okay. Uh, let me put it down to 0.5. And I'll duplicate it now. Make a wall is what I'm going to do. All right. Then I'll make a new empty game object. Just put it out there. And um, one trick I use is to, if if I want it, if I want the parent to be lined up with one of the children game objects, drop it first into one of the children game objects, and reset the position. So this is a useful technique. Then just take it out, and then take all the children, and drop them into the parent. And now it's easy to move them all around uh, in a sensible way. Uh, the parent isn't like far off in space and the children are sitting here and uh, it doesn't make any sense that way. All right, so coming back, I'll just say this um, a rigid body wall. And uh, I'll, I'll duplicate these some more. So another, another one again. All right. Okay, so I'll save that and uh, hit play. Now if I shoot my grenade, uh, let's see, what did it hit? It's hit a lot of items. So, uh, hmm, there we go. Basically what I need to do is to expand that up uh, to see all of the uh, rigid bodies uh, that were touched uh, by that overlap sphere and it's giving them all back to me. Um, so it is working and that's pretty cool and uh, what you see happening here is simply uh, the bullet just not getting destroyed so fast that it's unable to uh, actually push other game objects in the scene all that's happening there's no explosion so there's no explosion at the moment that's simply the bullet which is a rigid body itself just hitting stuff and it gets destroyed moments well, less than, probably even a moment later. All right, so that is pretty much working. I've got my overlap sphere working just fine. Uh, in the next video, what I need to do is to add an explosion force to make it a lot more interesting. All right, thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.